Focus on Abilities is brought to you by Tier Memorial Herman, Redefining Rehabilitation, Removing Barriers, Re-enabling Independence. In the ILRU Southwest ADA Center, promoting compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Welcome to Focus on Abilities, a program about issues affecting the lives of people with disabilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host. I'm professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston and director of the ILRU program at Tier Memorial Hermann. We've got an interesting program for you tonight from the Asia Society. Uh, we'll be meeting with a number of people, including the mayor of the city, but first, I'm happy to have a guest that I'll introduce right after we take this break. While the break is on, think about this. What does real abilities mean? We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us for Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host, and I want to introduce our guest this evening, uh, Mr. Carl Joshart. Carl, welcome to Focus on Abilities. Thank you so much, Lex. It's great to be here with you. Now, Carl, we know you're the CEO of Tier Memorial Herman, uh, the renowned uh, rehabilitation hospital in the medical center, but we're here tonight for a special occasion at the Asia Society. Will you tell us about real abilities? Well, Real Abilities is a film festival uh, that started in New York and has now come to Houston. And we're kicking off tonight a week-long festival of um, 10 films, 15 films in at 10 locations and in seven different languages, all by, for, and about people with disabilities. Uh, in addition, we have art exhibitions uh, and other things to educate the citizens of Houston all about um, the challenges and the lives and the accomplishments of people with disabilities. And so this is like a mega awareness raising program, right? It is, but through the arts, it's not really heavy on the education side, it's, it's entertainment. But after every film, there's talk back where we have people uh, living with disabilities, experts from the community, uh, and other individuals who can uh, lead the audience in a discussion about any questions that may have come up uh, during the films. And so we really hope that people will come away with a realistic uh, vision for how we can create a more barrier-free Houston. Now, Carl, I've looked at some of the titles, and it appears that some of the motion picture producers are people with disabilities, and you pointed out some of the actors are people with disabilities. Can you describe the array of programs we'll have the opportunity to see? Uh, there's really a range. Uh, everything from films about the lives of people living with autism uh, to uh, film warrior champions uh, where we see athletes who were able after losing limbs uh, in a war in Afghanistan to compete in Beijing in the Paralympics. Uh, we also have a film called Brain Damaged uh, that talks about some of the challenges of living with life um, after a brain injury. Um, there's films about autism, really a whole range. And the idea isn't to sugarcoat it. The idea is to really uh, give a realistic picture, but also show that we all live with a range of ability and disability and to blur the line in people's minds uh, between who are the people with disabilities and who are not. And I noticed that a lot of the programs represent sort of multicultural perspectives. One of them was produced in uh, about Afghanistan war veterans, another one was produced in China. It's a nice mix. It's a wonderful mix and we're so excited to be at the Asia Society. But I think one of the things that the international aspect of the festival shows is that the uh, challenge and the discussion and the dialogue um, about how to integrate people with disabilities into the community is going on all over the world. And that each uh, country and each community and each ethnic and cultural background has strengths and they also have unique challenges. And so we're not in this in the United States alone. Uh, our partners all over the world are thinking about these same issues. And you said that they're not all feel-good films. 
Right. I think that one of the things that we were very careful about in selecting the films is not showing films that idealized life with a disability. Uh, people with disabilities face real life challenges and we want people to be respectful of those and understanding, but we also want films that um, offer a balanced perspective and show the capability of all people and that society depends on the contributions of everyone. Uh, Carl, this is a Houston-wide event uh, about inclusion. Can you tell us who some of the sponsors were for this activity? Well, Jewish Family Services um, is, uh, our, is the host organization that first uh, was approached about um, putting together the film festival. And they came to tier right away, and uh, we joined on. And there's uh, many other sponsors. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, houston.realabilities.org, um, you can see a list of all the sponsors. But what's wonderful is that the sponsors include not mostly not people in healthcare at all. It's arts organizations. It's you know, um, you know, uh, law firms and uh, all, a whole range that really shows that this is a, a community that embraces diversity and it's not uh, that the disability community isn't separate and apart, that it's integrated into the community at large. We want to expose uh, people in the community um, not only to the issues about disabilities but to how wonderful Houston is. And so uh, I think we have uh, 10 or more uh, locations that have volunteered to be hosting venues. So this is the premier night uh, the is. grand opening, as it were. A lot of people are here. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to visit with some of them before the program closes today. But uh, on behalf of people with disabilities in Houston, Carl, thank you for being the uh, principal organizer of this activity. Well, it, it's our honor, and we, uh, uh, we are so proud. And we also want to offer our thanks to Mayor Anise Parker who has really embraced uh, this festival. And I, I know that she'll be coming to speak to you as well. And so, uh, but we couldn't do this without her support and the support of her office for people with disabilities. Well, we have a great city. It's inclusive. People with disabilities are part of the community. And I think the Real Abilities program just emphasizes that. Carl, thanks for being our guest on Focus on Abilities today. Lex, thank you so much for having us on the show. We, I really appreciate it. We appreciate all the work that you do for Houston and for helping get the word out about this new amazing film festival. I really appreciate everything you've done and uh, we hope to have you on again soon okay. to talk about more issues pertaining to TIER, our community, people with disabilities. Right now, however, uh, we're gonna take a break. So I hope all of you will stay tuned for more Focus on Abilities. We'll be back with Mayor Parker in just a minute. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities, and thank you for being with us today. We have a special guest I'm eager to introduce now, Mayor Anise Parker, Mayor of the City of Houston. Mayor, thank you for being our guest today. Lex, it's great to be with you today. Now, we're here for a special event at the Asia Society. This is the uh, premiere, the opening night of a program called Real Abilities. And uh, I understand that you're very eager to have people in Houston participate in this program. Well. We are an arts community, and this is an arts event, as well as an event that brings people from across the spectrum of the city of Houston together. This uh, film festival is focused on people with different abilities or disabilities and how they interrelate to the world. Some of the movies are documentaries, some of them are a theatrical release films, but they were chosen first and foremost because they're great films and they speak to the people of Houston. We have such an amazing diverse city here. This is an opportunity to showcase an aspect of life that not every Houstonian has an intimate familiarity with uh, and uh, to enjoy some really fantastic movies. Mayor, when we think about inclusion, we think about uh, race and gender, religion, and other characteristics. Some people don't think about disability. How do you frame that 
in a philosophy of inclusion? We have to be a society in which each one of us has the opportunity to succeed to the best of our abilities and to the extent of our capabilities. What has happened too often in the past is that we have not recognized the full extent of the abilities of people who are termed disabled. And while there are federal laws for inclusion, it's more important that people have a real understanding of what full inclusion means and not simply because there's a law that says you have to put a wheelchair ramp is in. It's more important that people understand what the limits of your chair are, for example, not that they're made to do something, or how someone with a disability, and there's a range of disabilities, and in fact, as a society, we are going to be forced to confront disabilities in a new way because as our troops have come back from Iraq and Afghanistan, more and more are surviving with severe head injuries, for example, that never would have come home before, uh, and because of IEDs with the loss of limbs. So we're going to be seeing more and more of our fellow citizens with visible disabilities that we're going to have to accommodate. And of course, we also have to understand that there are many people with disabilities that may not be apparent, but that we need to be accepting and understanding of. I think it's important for folks to know that while this program, which extends over several days, is an important statement about our community's commitment to inclusion, it's not nearly representative of all the things our city does to ensure opportunity for people with disabilities. Well, the, the, the city of Houston has a, 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 a defined role. For more than 20 years, we have had a mayor's office for people with disabilities. I have a really crackerjack director right now who's, who's very aggressive, but in addition to assisting in putting this film festival on, we are an advocacy organization connecting uh, people who contact us with services in the community, making sure that we follow through on enforcement of things like uh, handicap stickers for, for parking, making sure that those who may be disabled have uh, access to services to assist with uh, normal activities such as financial literacy, uh, making sure that they have access to knowledge about going to school, about college, college, whatever it is, we are a conduit to the appropriate agency that may provide the direct services. The other thing that I'm particularly excited about right now is the city of Houston has a growing number of parks without limits. And in January, we announce a new one, which will be out in far north Houston. It's actually going to be side by side. It's going to be Dillon's Park, side by side with a state-of-the-art uh, uh, skateboard park. But a park without limits is designed to allow kids with uh, disabilities and or their parents with disabilities uh, to be in a setting where you can have free play and, and really enjoy movement and the out of doors. And while we are blessed to be in a large city, uh, it, it provides challenges and opportunities. Many people across this country don't have access to the range of, of services and the range of uh, amenities that a big city like Houston has and so I'm really proud of these new new parks we're putting in. That's very important. Mayor, the, uh, we just passed the 20th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act a couple of years ago and we did a survey at the University of Texas Health Science Center uh, asking people with disabilities what they felt like the greatest accomplishments were and generally people said it's public accommodations. We've made great leaps forward. We asked them what the greatest gaps were, and they said essentially three things. Employment, they said access to health care, and also access to housing and recreation. So that's a wide range of things. We're clearly working in the area of recreation. I think our city has made a statement about housing and accessible opportunities for people with disabilities and employment. Are there other things that we're doing we should be aware of? 
Well, of course, there are things like the this Real Abilities Film Festival, which is designed to allow people to view uh, disabilities in a different way. But I don't know that I would agree with you that, that we've really done all that we can do on, on housing. For example, I've been working for some time to move council toward a, an idea of visitability if we build uh, housing that's paid for by public dollars. People think that visitability, which means can you accommodate a wheelchair in your home, in a, in a new built home, is something for people who are disabled today. But as baby boomers age, these issues are going to become much more and more important. We need to be having these, these dialogues about, as I look across the city of Houston and I see the sea of, of uh, you know, three-story, four-story townhomes, there's nothing wrong with those. But you can't age in place in uh, a property like that. And it's fine if the private sector builds that, but as we spend our public dollars, what is the appropriate way to spend them? And, and should we be rethinking how we provide housing? Uh, it's also, we, we have a, a, a challenge, and I'll admit this, in following the ADA and, and our system of providing uh, parking spaces for people who are in wheelchairs. We provide lots and lots of parking spaces in downtown Houston, for example, but many of those parking spaces are filled with people who have illegal hang tags. That is an enforcement issue that is a severe challenge. It involves, it involves law enforcement, but it goes back to what I said at the very beginning. It shouldn't be about law enforcement. It should be that no one would think about using a space that they don't, they're not entitled to because they understand that they're depriving someone else who really needs that space. It's about trying to reach the hearts and minds instead of just saying, you can't do that. One thing we should mention when we talk about parking as a program I know you're fond of, and that is training people how to be enforcement officers themselves. Our city has a wonderful program. That is one of the the few ways that citizens can act a little bit in the, in the role of uh, police or law enforcement, and that is we have a trained cadre of citizens who can write tickets for illegally parking in handicap zones. We train the citizens on, on how to recognize what's legal and, and, and not legal and uh, issue them ticket books and uh, uh, turn them loose. So if somebody's listening and would like to become one of those volunteer enforcement officers, they call the parking division? The first stop should be the mayor's office for people with disabilities. That's the entree in to a whole range of things that will help open up the world. Very good. Mayor Parker, thank you so much for being our guest here today. It's been a pleasure interviewing you and uh, uh, continue to espouse the concept of inclusion that includes people with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you all for being our guests today and uh, for watching Focus on Abilities. Uh, we'll be right back with some concluding comments. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. We're here at the Asia Society at the premiere of the Real Abilities Program. And I'm pleased to have with us now this evening uh, the co-chair of the Real Abilities event, Isabel Mayer. Yes. Uh, Isabel, thanks so much for taking the time to stop by. Well, thank you so much for being here and speaking with us. Now, now this is a, fa a fantastic program. It must have taken a lot of work to put it together. Um, you know, I, the festival has been a labor of love for a very tight-knit group from Jewish Family Service, Alexander Institute for Inclusion. But the wonderful thing about the festival has been the incredible support that we've received in the community. Um, How long have you actually been working on the event? You know, we were approached to work on the festival, I think in May, and I spent most of the summer viewing films. We screened over 50 films. We have selected 15 films, 
they are feature films, they are documentaries, so we have a good mix. We have films from all over the globe. We, the film that you'll be seeing this evening is Chinese. We have films that are American. We have films that are in Iran. We chose films not for their country of origin, but for the message that they were trying to get across and for the beauty of the film and for the community that those films created. And I understand some of the films are feature people with disabilities. Yes. Some of them may have been produced by people with disabilities. That is probably correct. Um, not all of the films we selected um, are in that category, but some of the films, there are films by and about people with disabilities. And they represent a wide range of disability types as well. Yes. Well, tonight's film is about a father trying to provide for his adult son who is on the autism spectrum. We are showing Warrior Champions and we'll be showing that around the city and that follows the story of four Iraq veterans who come home with physical disabilities, they've lost limbs. We have a film, Mourning, it's a Persian film and it deals with people who have hearing disabilities. Um, a film. Uh, I was interested in one title called Yo Tambien. Yes, yes. Yo Tambien is a, a wonderful film and a surprising. Watching many of these films, I found myself questioning my own ideas of what was disabled, who really was disabled in the film, and I didn't expect to have my, my whole view, um, you know, turned on end. But Yo Tambien is a Spanish film. And it, um, the hero of the film is a young man with Down syndrome. He has a master's, he goes to work in an office. Um, it's a city organization that helps people find jobs who are disabled, and he falls in love. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's a great movie, I hope you, you will see it. Isabel, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. I want to thank all of you for watching. We'll be back with more Focus on Abilities. on Abilities is brought to you by Tier Memorial Herman, redefining rehabilitation, removing barriers, re-enabling independence. In the ILRU Southwest ADA Center, promoting compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act.